Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 35 and it is Friday, September 2nd. My name is Rachel and I am coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls and if you would like to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me on Ravelry, Instagram or through email. I read everything that you send me and I read everything on the Ravelry group as well as the Slack channel and sometimes I just don't get back to people right away so thank you so much for being in touch and if I haven't gotten back to you it's not because I didn't read it because I did. It is the beginning of a new month. Happy fall to everybody and to those who have children returning to school or if you yourself is returning to school I hope your school year goes well. Uh, James is starting preschool in just over a week, um, so that's sort of an exciting thing for him because he'll be going a, one extra day a week this year, so three days a week for just a couple of hours, and he's really excited to see all of his friends. Um, because it is the beginning of a new month, we have a couple of things going on over here. Fiber Club will be, email, uh, will be mailed out, shipped out in a couple of days. And anything that people are expecting to receive, PDFs for workshops and the Thoughtful Spinner, we'll be receiving them within the next day or so. If you do not receive what you think that you are supposed to be receiving, please get in touch. And for anybody interested in finding out more about some of this stuff that's going on at Woolen Spinning, please check patreon.com slash wellfordpearls or the Ravelry group, which is Wool in Spinning. And thank you to those who have already supported the show. It's been very exciting up till now and I look forward to a very busy fall with you guys. So for the show today, we have um, a finished object. I have some spins in progress and I have a knit in progress. For those of you who are longtime watchers of the show, you will know this, but for those who are new to the show, this is a spinning focused show. I only talk about knitting with hand spun, hand spun projects and hand spun spinning. That doesn't make any sense. Spinning, anything related to spinning. So there, um, any knitting that I share is knitting with my hand spun. I thought today I would start with a spin in progress that I literally just started. It is from West Coast Color, which is local to me. Lynn is a dyer just up in Summerland, BC. So for those who are familiar with the Okanagan, you will know where she is coming from. And it is some fiber that I bought from her um, back in... July and this is my little sample it's um, a blend of fiber it's very gray and it has hits of sort of um, an okra yellow and a beautiful purple as well as some bluey grays and some um, gray purple and then some white spots which I really love um, this is her PMS base, which is 65% Polworth, 10% silk, and 25% yearling mohair. And I think this is a base that she gets locally or local-ish. It's very soft. It does have a halo because of the mohair. And I spun this using a short backward draw. I spun my default yarn, um, which is for me a medium yarn and medium twist. About a, I would say it's a heavy sport like DK. This yarn and I Andy and I bracelet plied it, Andy implied it um, for my sample just to see what the colors would look like and whether or not I needed to worry about color management. And I don't. It's um, the overall feel of the yarn is gray, which is what I thought, and I just love the results. So I am actually going to spin this um, probably throughout September, and if I have to put it aside for Spinzilla, I will. But I have two bumps of this. And my plan, and they are both 120 grams, and so one is going to be spun to one bobbin, one's going to be spun to the other bobbin, and then I'll ply them together for a two ply. So that is my plan, and I am actually thinking about finally knitting the succulent shawl by Maria Monska of the Stitched in Sweeting podcast. So I'm really excited about that. I think this will be really beautiful for a huge succulent shawl, and that's my plan. I've cast that shawl on before for those who will remember and I ended up uh, doing something different with that yarn. And I still really want to knit that pattern so I'm hoping that it'll work out this time. I have a knit in progress. This is the yarn. You will remember that I was spinning my crossbreed 
this is local to me as well. It comes from um, here in the Fraser Valley in the southern, in the southwestern part of British Columbia. This is quite a coarse yarn. I think for some people it wouldn't be next to the skin soft. It has a little bit of a prick to it. Um, for me, it's fine, and I did soak the yarn when I finished it. It's a three ply. I spun it long backwards dry. I've talked about it quite a bit on the show, so maybe check some back at, um, episodes in June. That was when I was doing most of the spinning of this yarn. So I started knitting the sweater. Excuse the needles in the microphone. I'm sorry if they clank around a little bit. Um, this I started on the way back on our trip um, a week and a half ago. I cast it on as we left Kamloops. I only had one little tiny ball of the yarn because I had knit my wrister when we first left, my wrist distaff. And I, so I had taken a little bit of the yarn so I could knit the wrister and wear it throughout our trip. And I thought if I cast on the sweater while we're gone, I'll just knit till I run out of that ball of yarn and then I'll be able to keep working on it when I get home. And that's what happened. So I literally ran out of yarn as we pulled up to our house three hours later. Kamloops is three hours from our house. And this is what this sweater is looking like thus far. So I've actually finished the, the yoke and I've also finished the uh, front. So last week I showed you the yoke and I talked about the raglan increases. So maybe check out episode 34 for more on that because there was some hiccups with the yoke. And then I have finished the front. So the pattern calls for two button bands along the side and I actually put in four only because I wanted slightly smaller buttons and slightly smaller button bands. And they're on both sides of the sweater. So this is a really cool construction. It's sort of a poncho. This is Lemongrass by Hohi Locatelli. And you knit the front. When you get to the yoke, you split and you knit the front and then you knit the back. So I'm actually halfway through the back now. I just started this this morning. I'm halfway through the back and then you knit the button band all the way around and then the two sides actually button together, which is really cool to hold the sweater um, together down the side and then it opens up sort of from the waist on and takes sort of um, an A-line shape, which is really cool. And then you pick up your sleeves and you knit your sleeves and then a turtleneck. I'm hoping that I have enough yarn. I spun enough yarn. But looking at what I have left for skeins of yarn and how much knitting I have left, I don't know that I'm that lucky. So I might have to spin some more yarn. Um, I was really hoping that I could use the rest of the bump of fiber that I have to spin a contrast for a hap that I'm thinking about. But I might have to spin more yarn for this. I was complaining at Katrina today about how quickly I'm going through yarn for this sweater. I'm knitting it on five millimeter needles. I have a drastically different gauge compared to what the patterns called for, calls for. And I am blasting through yarn quite quickly. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed, but I don't think I'm gonna luck out. I think I'm gonna have to spin some more yarn, which is a bummer because I don't like to start knits until I have all of the yarn done, but live and learn because I should have known better. Before I show you my finished um, object, I thought that I would show you August's Fiber Club. It was a mishmash this month. It was a bump of combed top and a couple of bumps of um, fiber that I had blended up on the on the um, on my drum carter. Sorry. So it was Wensleydale, Coriadale, a little bit of BFL, a little bit of merino, some. Uh, and some sparkle and actually I put in gold sparkle because I just love what it looked like next to the orange so this was uh, August fiber club and I called it peaches orange because when you combo drafted them the idea was that you strip down your comb top a little bit and strip down the bumps of the fiber club and then combo spin them it's for a lovely heathered textured yarn and I really like these results and I'm actually going to do a little bit more of this particular technique, but not in this color, um, just because it's quite loud and quite in your face. But I loved the results and I got a heavy sport and um, 
I'm really happy to throw this into my blanket, whatever that looks like eventually. That's all of the sampling of the, all the different Fiber Club colors. So that was August Fiber Club. And I hope that everybody liked it and enjoyed working with it. And I, like I said, I'll be sending out September's Fiber Club in just a couple of days. We have, I know it's the same in the US, but here in Canada, in North America, basically, Monday this weekend is Labor Day. And so everybody's off. It's a big statutory holiday. When I worked in emergency for quite a long time, I worked in eMERGE for almost 10 years before I moved into intensive care. And the Labor Day was the one day a year that nobody wanted to work. And it's actually because statistically it's our busiest year in emergencies. And that's because everybody's coming back into the city. They're coming back into their work and life. Things they've left for all of the summer, they are back to work and school on the Tuesday. and today they have to deal with it. So if you ever think about going to the emergency department on Labor Day Monday, <laughs> um, think about whether you really need to go because <laughs> it was always the day that everybody fought not to work even though we were paid double time. <laughs> so that goes to show you how busy it was. We always had lots of fun and we always ordered in lots of food and whatnot. So it ended up being really not a bad day at all, but it was always really busy. So um, I'm happy not to have to worry about working Labor Day anymore. So for my finished knit, this was something that I started back at the beginning of the month, actually, in August. It was sort of on a whim I started it. I This was July's Fiber Club from Sweet Georgie Yarns here in Vancouver, and it was a superwash merino, I'm pretty sure, but I might be wrong about that. It was called Odyssey. It was dyed by Ray C, who was a guest dyer that um, was interning with Sweet Georgia for the past year. And I divided the braid in half so that I would have two 50 gram skeins. One I did a traditional three ply for and one I did a Navajo ply. So I ended up with two 50 gram skeins that were each different and I wanted to stripe them in socks. So this was is the leftover yarn. And these are the socks. So they striped uh, very, not particularly well. Um, you can't really tell which yarn is which. They really blended together. And the reason for it, and I knew that it would happen, but I wanted to see for myself and have an example of what would happen when you had a yarn that was so similar. The colors weren't different enough that when you did the three ply fractal, you got enough variety that was different enough from the Navajo ply to create a true striping in the yarn. So even though I did a four by four stripe, you'd never know unless I told you, oh, this part is the fractal, this part is the Navajo ply. And a lot of the reason for that is that the, there's really only two colors in the yarn. There's the blue and the brown. So because, and tonally they're the same. So when I spun the fractal, there's a lot of places where those three colors, where those two colors in the three strands matched up over and over and over again. So I had a lot of parts in the yarn that were only blue and I had a lot of parts in the yarn that were only brown. So you can't tell in the finished socks which one is the solid and which one is the fractal. Um, this was also a prototype for an upcoming pattern that I'm working on. I was playing with short rows and playing with heel shaping and I was playing with toes. And so these socks actually are every single side of these socks is different because I used a different technique. So this side of the heel is different from this side, is different from this side, is different from this side. And it's only because I was playing with different heels and different shapes and different shapes of heels. So these were sort of a prototype and an excuse to play. But in terms of the striping of the socks, it didn't really do anything to have all of that work of striping the socks. In some ways I could have just knit one out of the fractal, one out of the Navajo ply, and at least one of the socks would have been a little bit different than the Navajo ply because the fractal had much, much longer color repeats of the sort of solid parts, if you will, so all brown, all blue, than the Navajo ply because the Navajo plied yarn, I stripped down quite a lot, so the color repeats were quite short. So it would have created, that would have created two different socks. Um, 
so instead what I've ended up with is two actually quite analogous socks which is kind of nice too so I knit the toes only using the Navajo plied yarn and then I did the heels only using the fractal yarn and the nice thing about that is I ended up with two little bumps of yarn left that'll create my samples that I can take with me when I show these for trunk shows and stuff um, that I can share that are quite equal because if I had done the Navajo plied yarn for the heels as well I wouldn't have had as much of the sample left because that's actually quite a bit of yarn there's actually quite a lot of yarn in our heels by the time you build the first half of the heel and then build the second half of the heel and I usually add in extra rows before I go back to knitting around which I was also playing with in this so um, yeah so the nice thing is I ended up with two very similar amounts left I don't know exactly how much I have left I actually don't know what my yardage was I need to calculate my grist which is um, the weight of your yarn per pound yards per pound sorry the length of your the length of your yarn per pound so how much yardage that do you get per pound of yarn I've written a blog post about it if you go on to the blog welfarepearls.com and search in the search box grist the blog post will come up um, Anyways, I need to calculate my grist of these two yarns and then I can figure out what my yardage was based on the weight of the socks and roughly how much yardage these took, which I'm actually quite curious about because I'm thinking that each took about 125, 135 yards of yarn. Um, I knit these on 2.5 millimeter needles using the magic loop method. And yeah, there's really nothing else to say about them. Sorry for the pause there everyone. I wanted to finish off the show by thanking everybody for tuning in this week. I hope that you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend if you sell, if that's happening in your area of the world and if not have a wonderful beginning to your September and I will talk to you all next week. I have some plying that I'm trying to get finished on my wheels as well as some other projects that I'm trying to finish up so I'll have lots to share with you. Until next week, happy spinning. Bye everyone.